When I first arrived in Japan back in 2012, the Japanese idol girl group AKB48 quite literally dominated Japan. When I turned on the TV inside of my dorm room, there was AKB. When I walked outside of my dorm room and walked down the corridor going past the other rooms, there were many AKB posters attached on many of the guys' doors. When I walked outside and went to the train station, there were AKB posters everywhere. Inside the trains were also of no exception. And when I got off the train and walked around on the streets of Tokyo, there was music of AKB being played in all shops and restaurants. So in essence, my point here is that there was a point in time when, without much exaggeration, AKB was Japan and Japan was AKB. But when you watch television of Japan now, the amount of times in which an AKB member comes out in a major TV show in the primetime hours is far less than what it used to be. The same applies to the amount of CD albums in which they sell now. They do not sell anywhere near the amount of albums and AKB related goods as compared to the past. And at this rapidly decreasing pace, AKB may very well become completely irrelevant in a few years time. So after observing this more than drastic downfall of a J-pop entity that literally used to dominate the nation in all spheres of life when I first arrived in Japan, it led me to ask the following question and conduct subsequent research. And the question is, as you may have guessed, how did all of this happen? Let's find out in today's video. First, we cannot discuss the decline of AKB48 without mentioning the impact in which the recent pandemic had on the girl group's fundamental business model. As many of you guys may already be aware, the look and style in which AKB pursues is fundamentally different to that of K-pop girl groups. While the K-pop girl groups generally go for the more professional, sophisticated image with high-level choreography, with no air, high-end stage presence, and music videos, AKB's very business model is to essentially do the opposite which is to pick rather untrained young members, have them conduct very childlike and basic choreography matched with, once again, not the most well-trained of vocals. But then, the producer of AKB, Yasushi Akimoto, who is commonly regarded in Japan as this godfather-like figure of the Japanese idol girl group scene, created this very image of immaturity on purpose for the financial end. By having the members be these rather ordinary, girl-next-door type image individuals who are still young, unrefined, and capable of making mistakes, the strategy very much succeeded in appealing to a rather significant portion of the Japanese men who felt this very sense of intimacy with these still unrefined girl group members, as in how they felt far more approachable compared to the strong, independent women out in the normal society. I mean, when a typical Japanese man sees Lisa from Blackpink, they're not going to look at her and say, wow, look how cute and vulnerable she is. I want to protect her and be her boyfriend. Of course, they might still see Lisa from Blackpink and think, uh, she's very beautiful or she's very pretty, but it fundamentally has a different undertone which is more in the lines of awe and respect as they can just immediately more or less tell that Lisa from Blackpink is smarter, richer, better looking, just in most aspects of life better than them in all spheres, thus just lack the quote-unquote approachability part of the spectrum of the appeal. And the mastermind behind all of this, who is once again the producer Yasuhi Shakimoto, ignited the fantasies of many Japanese men even further by implementing these rather, let's just say, very unique business models. Before the pandemic, huge numbers of AKB sales came from the fan meetings or the quote-unquote hand-holding sessions. To elaborate, if you bought a certain edition of an AKB CD album, you had the chance to hold hands with an AKB member at one of these sessions. And as you can see from this photo, this prospect of being able to hold hands with an AKB member probably sounded like a dream come true to much of this particular segment of the Japanese male fans. So needless to say, whenever an album was released by AKB, it dominated the Japanese charts which largely provided the rankings based on the CD sales numbers. And this was a virtuous cycle for AKB, as with them dominating the Japanese charts further solidified their standing in Japan, which meant more invitation for AKB members to attend nationally televised Japanese TV shows in prime time, which meant more exposure for them that led to the creation of new fans, then go on to buy their CD albums to be able to attend the quote-unquote hand-holding sessions, so on and so forth. So as questionable as this business model is on many different levels, we have to admit that the producer, or the godfather of AKB, Yasushi Akimoto, 
was smart when it came to exploiting the psychology of a particular segment of men in Japan. But with the outbreak of the pandemic, the infamous hand-holding sessions were obviously brought to an absolute halt for over two years. And with one of AKB's biggest revenue sources, which were these limited edition, high-priced CD albums, with tickets to these personal fan meetings effectively disappearing, the number of CDs sold obviously decreased by a wide margin, having a huge negative impact on the revenue and in popularity. Now, we also cannot discuss the downfall of AKB without the scandals. Personally, when I think of an AKB scandal, I cannot forget this one video back from January 2013. I came down to the dorm dining hall as usual in the morning to eat breakfast, then saw this video of a girl who had shaved herself bald crying her eyes out, begging for forgiveness all over the news. It was indeed a moment of quite a culture shock. And it turned out that she was Minami Minagishi, a member of AKB48 at the time, and was found spending a night together with her boyfriend, which broke the cardinal rule set to all AKB members of quote-unquote no dating. Now, it was not like she was 12 years old or something. She joined AKB in the year 2005 and was a fully grown adult of 20 years old when all of this happened. And while this incident in and of itself did not have a significant impact on the overall downfall of AKB, it did act as the starting precedent for all of the AKB-related scandals and the questionability of the whole industry itself beginning from the 2010s. So let us have a look at some of the more prominent scandals which occurred in the subsequent years that led to the gradual deterioration of AKB's image, and with that, their popularity. Now, when it comes to the scandal that opened the eyes of many of the AKB fans in that, many of these girl group members were not these pure, innocent angels in which they think to be at these cringe hand-holding events, but were people of questionable morality, again, not all, but some. We have to talk about the Shinoda Mariko scandal. Being 168 centimeters tall, which is rather quite tall in Japan's female standards, with model-like proportions and good looks, she was a very popular member among the AKB members and received much public love. And after she quote-unquote graduated from AKB, she went on to marry a Japanese businessman in the year 2019. But then, only three years after the marriage, it was announced that she cheated on her husband with a Japanese startup entrepreneur and was undergoing divorce procedures. Her husband was so upset that he filed a lawsuit against his very own wife, providing actual evidence of line texts, voice recordings, and her using ovulation cycle applications on her phone to arrange the dates of when she met the other guy. Needless to say, the Japanese fans of AKB were in shock that their precious angel, past AKB Team A captain member, was capable of conducting such an action. And shortly after all of this was made public, she made an announcement on Instagram saying, I have something to tell you guys. And of course, everyone thought that this was going to be her trying to explain all of these allegations on a genuine basis to her fans. But the fans who expected this were left much disappointed and enraged as this important quote-unquote I have something to tell all of you guys announcement was of her taking advantage of the public attention in which she was receiving at the moment as a result of the scandal and utilizing this time of heightened attention to have the audacity to advertise a baby soap brand in which she has newly created. This again led many of the past and current AKB fans to break away from the decades-long fantasy where they imagined these AKB members to be these flawless angel-like beings and found out the hard way in that for many of these idols, the fans are mostly their tools for financial gain. So needless to say, this scandal did severely tarnish the image of AKB to the general public and was quite a pivotal moment in terms of having many of the past and present AKB fans to stop their support of the idol group. Such revelations on many of the realities of the AKB members, or the sister group members of AKB, such as Kea Kizaka 46, which were all created by the same producer, just continued on in the 2020s, accumulating to the deterioration of their quote-unquote pure image. Many of such cases throughout the late 2010s to early 2020s can be mentioned, but for the sake of the video, let's just name a few. In September of 2022, a now former member of the girl group Kyakizaka 46 announced that she began to work at a Kabakura, the name for Japanese hostess clubs in the nation's adult industry. Again, not something a quote-unquote pure innocent doll would do. And how about a member of another AKB sister group, Nogizaka 46, directly advertising for Papakatsu, or compensated dating on Twitter for 3,000 yen an hour. So with the development of the internet and social media, which has made it exponentially harder for the management companies to hide the personal lives and real personalities of many of his group members, 
more and more male fans have came to realize that these members were not this pure, innocent dolls who were just waiting to hold their hands in the next fan meeting session. And with this image of innocence and purity that basically symbolized and made AKB and a sister group so popular in the 2000s and 2010s being slowly but most definitely shattered with the rise of social media, so did the fundamental source of appeal to a lot of his male fan base. And skepticism about the entire industry itself and the highly questionable set of ethics of the management companies in terms of providing physical security and protecting the rights of the idol members also inevitably surfaced. For instance, a member of NGT48, another sister group of AKB48 with of course the same producer, said on a live stream that two men attacked her as she was entering her apartment. This is a tremendously heartbreaking event as although she wanted to discuss with the management company first of the attack before bringing the issue to the public, the management company just merely returned her with complete ignorance for over a month as in just telling her to stay silent. And in the already isolated, Galapagos was like land of Japan with their own unique set of ethics and norms that is very different from those of any other nation around the world. If this was indeed 10 years ago, when there was no social media live streams, no Twitter and no Instagram, this incident did most likely go without any public disclosure and was most likely silenced as the management company wanted, as the idol group members back then had no social media tools such as live streams to have their say with the outside world as they do now. But thankfully, we have social media now that provides a say to these idol members and thus the complete disregard for the safety and seeking of justice for its members by the management company was revealed to all the people of Japan to witness. Talking about social media, this leads to my next point. Now, when we see a fully grown 20-year-old adult woman having to shave herself bald and cry in front of the entire nation begging for forgiveness because she has a boyfriend, we just feel on an intrinsic basis that this is just weird and is not right. But then, at around 2012 to 2013, YouTube was not the extremely popular video platform that it is today, used ubiquitously by people from all around the world. The same, of course, applied to other social media platforms, such as Instagram and Twitter. So I remember how 10 years ago, in early 2013, Minami Minagishi and her entire hair shaving and crying for forgiveness ordeal was not much covered at all by the Western media. I mean, sure, some niche media sources that had an interest in Japan did report on it, but again, they were like I said, niche. But then, the year 2023 that we are living right now is very different from that of exactly a decade ago in 2013. As in, if a similar happening occurs once again in Japan, where a 20-year-old adult woman is forced by the management company to shave her entire head and get on her knees and cry for forgiveness in front of the entire country, I can guarantee you guys that there will be a lot a lot more Western media coverage and scrutiny now compared to back in 2013. This is as the world now is just way more connected than it was in the past, as well as the reputation and status of Asia and its entertainment industry in the West just being night and day different compared to 10 years ago, with Squid Game from South Korea literally being the most watched Netflix show of all time, as well as K-pop groups such as BTS making history with most Billboard number 1 hits so far in this decade. So while the Japanese entertainment industry objectively does not receive as much international attention as that of its South Korean counterpart, a lot of eyes from the West are still naturally being directed towards the entertainment industry of South Korea's neighboring country of Japan as well, exponentially more so now than it has been in the past. And same with any other person from any other country in the world, the Japanese do not like to be ridiculed. But this was increasingly what was going on with the J-pop industry as more and more international media and online communities naturally got in touch with what was going on in Japan. For example, the Oricon chart used to basically be the billboard charts of Japan as in how it functioned as the single most important and looked into music chart of the entire country. And whenever AKB released an album or a single, this is what the Oricon chart used to look like. But let us be frank here. Did AKB literally dominate the J-pop scene and thus the auditory senses of the Japanese people in terms of what they hear on television, trains, cafes, shops, basically in all public and private realms of life of an individual living in Japan because of the quote-unquote quality of their music? I believe you all know the answer to this question. But then, how did they dominate the Japanese music charts from top to bottom for so many years? This is as the Oricon charts were mainly judged 
based on the number of CD album sales in which an artist made across Japan within a designated period of time. And of course, we all already know at this point that no artist in Japan could compete against AKB back in the days when it came to the total number of CD sales, with their inclusion of tickets to exclusive fan meetings and quote-unquote hand-holding sessions and whatnot, included only with the purchase of their CD album. But then, the typical outsider from abroad does not know all of these inner details. So just by looking at the charts, it could be quite easy for a non-Japanese person to look at Japan and see them as a rather eccentric bunch who only listen to music sang by 13-year-old girls dressed like dolls without much vocal training. And as the level of international scrutiny did gradually increase over the years, along with the development of social media and online platforms, as well as just objectively larger attention to the entertainment industries of East Asian nations in general, the official music chart in which became the standard in Japan for people to identify the quality and popularity of songs and artists transitioned away from the Oricon charts to the Billboard Charts Japan. And while the Oricon chart focused mainly on the number of CD sales of the artist as the deciding factor of the rankings, the Billboard Charts Japan took a more fair, comprehensive approach as in considering the number of music downloads, number of streaming time and play time and so on, along with the CD sales numbers. And when this happened, the music charts in Japan did come out rather differently and people from abroad could subsequently realize that not all Japanese people had their taste in music solely in listening to adolescent girls sing in doll costumes, but that many do have a sophisticated and tasteful sense in music just as many other people from all around the globe. So with this manipulation of the music charts for Japan through business strategies that are solely focused on CD album sales numbers now becoming not an option for AKB, a vicious cycle ensued for them as low rankings in music charts proved their decrease in popularity, which meant less invitation for the AKB members to be aired in primetime television shows in Japan, leading to less public exposure, which would then cycle back to reduce popularity, so on and so forth. And of course, we cannot end the video without mentioning the influence of K-pop to this whole phenomenon. Let us talk about the obvious first. With the introduction of K-pop girl groups such as TWICE and BLACKPINK into Japan around 2016, and the subsequent popularity in which they gained in the country, people in Japan gradually began to naturally make the comparison between the K-pop idol groups and the Japanese ones. And this comparison in the quality of the idol culture between South Korea and Japan became more and more pronounced with events such as the Korean Idol Survivor Project produced 48 being nationally televised on Japanese television. Interestingly enough, South Korea's Mnet and Akimo Tashishi, the producer of AKB, conducted this as a joint project between Japan and South Korea, which meant that the show had both South Korean and Japanese participants. And as you can probably imagine, when the AKB-like Japanese trainees competed against the K-pop trainees, a lot of them lacked clear skills in all spheres of being an idol, such as in singing, choreography, etc. And such constant scenes of Japanese idol trainees just being outclassed and being heavily critiqued by the professional judges was nationally televised in Japan, bringing many previous fans of AKB-like groups back to reality, and have them begin to understand how the idol culture was being viewed from outside of Japan. But let's also not get it twisted. I found out afterwards that Produce48 also actually did an excellent job in identifying the highly skilled, highly competent idols from Japan, such as Sakura Miyawaki, who's actually at the height of her popularity right now in South Korea as a member of the South Korean girl group Lizerapim. And I personally believe that Sakura from Lizerapim shows the potential in which so many of the idol girl group members in Japan have. Now, is it the case that all girl group members from South Korea are just born more talented with better vocals, choreography, and style compared to their Japanese counterparts? I don't think so. A lot of the professionalism and competency shown by the South Korean idol members is a result of years and years of dedication and hard training. So, leading from this point, I believe that the transition away from the AKB-like idol culture in which Japan is currently undergoing right now is definitely a good sign for the nation. Rather than treating these women as some dolls incarnated to human form and deliberately undertraining them and make them act childlike and unrefined to make them look more innocent, pure, vulnerable, and associable to a lot of the socially undesirable portion of the Japanese men for the sake of, of course, the financial gain of the entertainment management companies allow these idols to reach their full potential and be treated as respected stars of an industry 
and most of all, human beings. Again, please permanently get rid of the culture where a fully grown 20 year old adult woman has to be forced to shave herself bald and beg on her knees for forgiveness in front of the entire nation just because she has a boyfriend. And with more and more and more people in Japan getting more awake in the year 2023 and thinking the same as I, the downfall and eventual path to irrelevance of AKB-like girl groups in Japan seems inevitable.